Let's bring in a forensic pathologist and Fox News contributor, Dr. Michael Bodden. Mm -hmm. And, Doctor, you would be the one, if you were arriving on scene tomorrow, to look at these bodies and to figure out exactly what was happening to them. What's the first thing that you would look at if, you, if these victims uh, were investigated by you? Well, that, that's kind of universal now, how coroners and medical examiners examine bodies. And uh, there's first the scene investigation that's important, which is going on right now. There are the living people who are going to hospitals that contain a lot of evidence. And in the mortuary, in the Manchester mortuary, which is a few hundred miles away from London, um, they have a set up a plan how to deal with uh, uh, mass disasters. They do more training in, in England than we do in, in the United States using police, coroners, uh, 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 criminalists uh, in mock drills uh, uh, over in England because of their vulnerab vulnerability. And the first thing that uh, would happen is that uh, tomorrow uh, the, each body will be examined externally, uh, photographs will be taken, clothing, jewelry uh, would be removed and uh, carefully uh, 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 collected and put into containers. Uh, photographs will be taken of the bodies, uh, of the total bodies without clothing. Uh, and they have something that they're doing in England now that um, uh, we haven't really started in the, in the United States doing CAT scans of the bodies. Uh, and they have special machinery now there to examine the bodies externally without necessarily doing autopsies and identifying if there's any evidence in the body uh, so that uh, uh, the evidence uh, if there are missiles or fragments of what was the, you just discussed uh -huh. about uh, ball bearings and, and uh, nails uh, uh, for example but there's also explosive gases on the skin and clothing which can be swabbed and examined also all to determine what kind of device it was, and if you know what kind of device it is, you may the um, forensic scientists there and police can uh, uh, get it back to who made the device and uh, which group made the device. Now that's as far as evidence collection, but also the coroner and the medical examiners going into the mortuary, they have two immediate concerns. The police, they want to know who the bomber is, to identify the bomber and who it is and where it comes from. The fa each family wants their loved one identified and released as soon as possible right. so that they can make burial arrangements and, and family matters. So all that will be going on tomorrow and uh, they'll be able to make identifications pretty quickly given all the new technologies with the CAT scans and with uh, the uh, the fact that these people probably had identification on them, you know, uh, purses, uh, lockets. Uh. Right, but Dr. Bott, go back while I've got you here. Go back, if you will, to the CAT scan. I want to know what's the benefit. What's the benefit of the new way of getting a CAT scan versus the old way of an autopsy? Are, are we gleaning different information? Are we gleaning information that can help us in the future? Y yes, I think uh, the, the CAT scanning... Uh, uh, doing CAT scannings in three dimensions really on the body, one can see the patterns of injury in each body more clearly uh. than the regular uh, x-rays that we take uh, uh, here in the States and um, uh, the photographs. But th th in this situation, it's, it's clear that uh, all these people who are dead died from uh, an explosive device. But knowing the patterns will bring you back to where the bomb went off, who was, uh, who, uh, how the bomb went off, how to protect against this in the future, and how to make sure that all the uh, uh, penetrating uh, uh, shrapnel gets uh, removed, because that's the evidence of what the bomb was made of. And this goes not only for the dead, but the living, because the, the 50 or so people who are in hospital who have been injured uh, will have information. And every when the surgeon operates and removes shrapnel uh, or whatever from the bodies, that will all go to the police uh, so that yeah. uh, uh, th they'll be able to get a good picture of who the bomb maker may have been.
I'm curious when you say that it can help us in the future maybe defend against this. Kind of expand on that for me. What do you mean we can, we can defend against these types of bombs better by knowing what they hit us with? Well, I think once you know what the bomb is made of, and uh, who's making it? Remember in Libya, when the well, not in Libya, but uh, when the uh, 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 plane uh, uh, crashed uh, uh, in Scotland some uh, decades ago, right. uh, they were able, from a piece of fragment that, like a thumbnail size, trace that bomb uh, back to the maker in Libya. And uh, the Interpol and the police are very much involved in this investigation right now and tomorrow in the, in the mortuary. And they get a, a great deal of information because each, as you've discussed before, each bomb maker, uh, this isn't something they learn at Harvard. They all dis, you know, learn themselves how to make bombs. And right. each bo of these bomb makers have... Um, uh, some uniqueness to what they use and how they uh, uh, make the bomb uh, go off, and uh, and and these are helpful. Uh, but but uh, as far as uh, the families, they want their body, the, the the remains as soon as possible. And I think right. the, the getting proper X-rays can sometimes get the bodies to the families quicker. I, you, you brought up the, the Pan Am attack over Lockerbie, Scotland many years ago. I, in that time, in those decades since then, Dr. Bodden, and my last question to you, have we come leaps in the technology and the knowledge that we have of these types of explosions, or, or has it just been baby steps in all these years? No, we've, come, be, we've got, gone leaps in how to identify uh, from uh, sm the smallest particles of a bomb uh, a great deal of information about the uh, the bomb. Uh, the, the the forensic science has has uh, increased greatly, and uh, that uh, can be important in also uh, finding out what if, if there are certain kinds of right. chemical that's used to make a bomb by a, a certain bomb maker. Tracing that chemical when it's when it's bought, you know, on the internet or something might be helpful in uh, identifying yeah. who a potential uh, a bomb maker be, uh, may be, and there's right. that kind of information. Yeah, and as you say, the the yeah, the internet of course has been a huge tool in oh, helping yeah. us do that. Dr. Michael Bodden, always great stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Trace.